Hello and welcome to Season 3, Episode 9, the final episode of the season. Today we've got the final match of the season at home to Bath. Uh, we've also got a debrief of how the season has gone, a preparation for the transfer window to come, and a brief check on Solihull Moors. Form, since you... My name's Ashley, by the way, sorry. Uh, form, since you were last with us, has been... Mm, on and off. You were last with us for the Accrington Stanley and Port Vale games. Uh, since then, a two, difficult 2-1 two game against Boreham Wood. We, probably, we were 2-0 down and probably deserved to lose that. We then got good wins against Tranmere and Maidenhead. A disappointing 4-1 loss uh, against Hartlepool. A 2-1 defeat to Challenge. But again, that was disappointing. We were the better side in that. And then on to today's game. The tactics and and team that we've got for today is Durrell, Amos, Suker, Smith and Higgins with Obeta not, uh, not available through injury. He hasn't been very good the last few weeks anyway. Finney, Young and Rothorn, uh, Gregor Cox, Morton and Reed. We're going to turn high tempo off because I don't think it's been working. And we're also going... No, we're going to leave Rothorn. I was going to play Klaklowski, but no, I'm happy with that. Reed up front rather than changing plans. Carl McFarlane is going to play today. Why not? You, he is an old Solihull Moors boy at all. I didn't show you the Chelmsford game because, for me, uh, the, uh, the, the season's already finished. We've stayed up. But we have got plenty of news to tell you. Talks of a local investor taking over the club means we could be out of a job very quickly if he doesn't like our particular style. Uh, but a takeover could be imminent. We're under a transfer embargo at the moment, so transfers not going to happen at the moment. But hopefully that will be resolved before the main body of the transfer window kicks off and uh, we can look to bring some players in, which will be needed for the push we're going to have next year. Also, we have a new contract. A new contract taking us to the end of next year. Um, we've gone up from £750 a week to, I think, is it, is it £925,000? Sorry, not pounds, not, not thousands, 925 pounds a week. That's more like it. It's a lot of money. That would have been a lot of money for somebody in the non-league. It would have been a lot of money for somebody in the Premier League, but there you go. That contract takes up... Unfortunately, Football Manager still hasn't put in the ability to negotiate a, a coaching qualification with the contract, which seems ridiculous because you can offer it to staff and staff can request it from you, but you can't do it yourself, which is always seems silly to me but there we are um i in fact i did i did i did a qualification during my last real life con contract negotiations so you know obviously you can do it in real life not in the game also with that we've been off we were offered the barrow job or rather an interview to go and talk to barrow um i didn't even go for the interview because as you can see they're dead last they got relegated actually the day after they offered me the job McFarlane's just stuck in a great goal. Morton with the assist. And and so, yeah, we're starting to attract a few offers uh, uh, for uh, to, to manage other teams. Now, whether that's something we might look to do in the future, maybe next season, if we're not pushing playoffs next season, we might look to try and get up a division that way if we've done a coaching badge as well that I think we might start attracting newer um, newer offers and um, better offers for us to go and manage. That could be something we're looking for. And the transfer window itself, well, we'll have a little talk once this game's finished about the team and how they've performed this year because we've changed the team drastically since we came in in pretty much every position on the pitch. And we'll talk about who we're going to be looking for to come in and change the team, push this team on to higher echelons. We've just given away a penalty. Higgins has given away a penalty. He's a fool for doing it. Compton steps up. Durrell somehow manages to do sort of, sort of a diving arabesque without actually moving in either direction and still didn't save the ball when it was blasted at him. But there we are, 1-1. One, one. You can tell I'm not too interested in this game. It makes no difference, basically, to how the season's gone. We've managed to stay up in a year where staying up was our only target. And... Morton... 
mean, Morton is here next year. We've got him tied down to a contract, I can, which is great because we can start pushing people around him. I'd like to finish 17th rather than 18th, I suppose. So a win would be nice. But in the end, we finished, what, 11 points? Sorry, 9 points ahead of the relegation zone. A win would increase, would, would, uh, increase that figure. Overall, though, what's been, you know, we, we were comfortable this year in avoiding relegation. Only once, really, did we slip into it, and we went on that fabulous run to get out of it. Hopefully, that will be the last of the relegation zone you see and I see uh, in this division, at the very least. It's taken a long time for us just to uh, stop scrapping. We've been at two different clubs doing the same thing. But then, as I said right at the very beginning, we started too high. Uh, for our coaching badges th that we had. We started with the very lowest coaching badge. You can't work at this level um, unless you've got at least one or two coaching badges. So the season's over. We finished in 18th place with 55 points. Our target was 50, so we've exceeded that. Nine points ahead of Bath, who got relegated. The team general performance is... For the, se for the season are as follows. The best player was Luke Young for a second season in a row. Rhys Gregor Cox was also right up there with eight goals and nine assists. Our, but our top goal scorer was Callum Morton. He's been our best player. Four star, still five star potentiality. We've got him on contract for another two years. I think uh, he's definitely going to be somebody we can try and build a, a team around next season. He's very well suited to this level. He's only going to get better as well. I'm delighted for him. Second top goal scorer, Bradley Fuster, who was predominantly the number one striker in the club. But Karl McFarlane came in, and in his games, he actually will be the player that we probably look push to um, push on to lead us next year. He has come in. We have got him on contract for another year and a bit. Um, three and a half stars, four and a half star current ability. Potential to be a good League Two striker. Currently a good National League striker. I think he's where we're going to go. The players that are going to leave then. He can go already. Actually, let's just release him now. For contract, just release him free. We might hang on to Kukluski. Um, if Certainly, we're going to be looking to bring in a box-to-box -box midfielder because I thought our tactic worked a lot better with a box-to-box -box midfielder than just a centre midfielder. Um, so he will be looking someone we can go. We're currently negotiating with Ryan Higgins to keep him at the club. But whether he's the right choice to write back, I don't know. Um, he's certainly not good enough for this level. So we might... Both full-backs, right and left, are positions that we're going to look to improve. Also, all the loan signings going. Ross Finney, we're going to need a new defensive midfielder if we're going to persist with this tactic, or we go to a 4-4-2. In which case, we need to sign some right midfielders rather than right wingers. Danny Amos also goes, and Will Smith. There, We're going to need, as I say, a left back, as both our left backs are going. Will Smith's centre of defence is going to go. We've got Suka available, but we're going to look to have Suka as a, as a backup to a main striker. Sorry, main centre back. Having a quick look then at so how Solihull Moors did without us. They finished in third. They've got a playoff game, uh, place to come. We might well be seeing them again next season, which would be nice. There's the final table. That brings season three to a close. Hopefully next episode we'll have lots of transfers for you to dig your teeth in, although I'm not sure how much wage budget we've got to work with. We spent a lot of it this year and we've been overspending. Like the episode if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you want to see next season on season four of our career mode where we try and go from obscurity to Champions League glory. And thank you very much for watching.